top out to uh, excite Melbourne Rover Tony Elshaw crashed to the ground against St Kilda and the Demons went down by 52 points the quick hand pass to Dunn. St Kilda going forward again as Jeff Dunn puts the short kick in. The bounce over the head there. Tapped by across there to Roberts and he brings up his second. Quasel, Satori gives a hand pass across to Thomas. He handles it forward, goes after it again. Chance of a score coming up as the long kick from Thomas. Wonderful foot. But the boundary line may beat them all. That it does, we'll see the throw in take place in Melbourne's forward pocket position. As we go into the third quarter, one and a half minutes, it's Melbourne 4 9 33, St Kilda 6 14 50. Kellett against Baker. Kellett got the tap dangerously over the back, but it picked up by Thomas. Thomas now from the half back line goes towards half forward. Brown was trying to tap the ball over the back, but Hardeman was over the top, and eventually Giles picks the ball up. Giles out towards the half, uh, well, centre wing really, and we now find Cunningham and Healy racing for possession. Healy gathered the ball in, then lost possession. He's well tackled and puts it straight over the boundary line. It must go against Healy. So the free kick will be taken by Jeff Cunningham and St Kilda. He's on true centre wing on the outer side of the ground. Saru calling for the ball in the centre. I don't know whether he's going there. Yes, he is now. Saru opposed to Young, but Saru taking the mark. On, still on the wing position. The ball's been brought off the boundary line to be more in the centre of the ground. Saru hand passes on. Fiddler accepts the hand pass. Gives one on himself to Nettlefold. Going down towards the point of the square. Nettlefold under no pressure at all by the Melbourne uh, side. Philetic in the position, and Jezelenko, I should say. Jezelenko, well, oh, gathers the ball in beautifully. Tried to get the hand pass over the top. They both have that long flowing hair in the front, uh, Jack. <laughs> yes, they have, Bob. Same as mine. <laughs> Only one point coming out of all that. So Smith of uh, Melbourne with the ball. The score you see in front of you, 51 playing 33. Stephen Smith, I think he might go to centre-half forward. He's not too sure what to do with it. Byrne is the fellow he's looking for, and should have been a free kick. Yes, he was being held. Didn't take the mark. But Byrne uh, will take this free kick and still in the back pocket position. A 15 metre penalty will bring him up to the half back flank now. Coswell calling for the ball at centre half forward, but he's going out toward the Seddon on the wing position. Melbourne going a bit wide. Seddon broke away all right, got the boot to it up towards Cotogio, who's been a very quiet player in the first half. And Coswell backing him up, but Cotogio gains possession, balks around Fiddler, and eventually got the boot to it, looking for Jackson, who was tripped. But up in front is Baker. Can't hold the mark, it's forced to the boundary line. In fact, it's still in play. Thomas uh, tried to get it out, I thought. Eventually got it away from the pack. Another opportunity for Nettlefold. He had gets a hand pass working to Elphinstone. Elphinstone got a hand pass that time to Roberts, having trouble picking up. The ball still in front of him. Roberts looking for the free kick, not being paid. Picked up by Mildenhall. And St Kilda get out of trouble eventually. From, as Callot gives it across now to Elphinstone. He has time to have a bounce. That time Zantuck did apply a bit of pressure, but a long kick up forward. Zezelinko has the ball punched away by Stephen Smith, but it's rowed by Philetic. Philetic's kicked down towards the forward pocket. Fowler's at the back, couldn't quite take the mark. It's off the hands of Laurie Fowler and over the boundary line for a throw in. Four minutes have gone, the third quarter you're watching. Melbourne 4 9 33 and St Kilda 6 15 51. About 50,000 people here at the MCG enjoying this game of football. Saru, a lovely knock. It's the, the hand pass came from Herbert across now to Nettlefold. He goes goalward. It's just over, no, it's just touched by Laurie Fowler. A great effort by Fowler to go back and just get the hand to that ball. So St Kilda go to six goals, 16, 52 points with Melbourne 4 9 33. And the short pass came in. Melbourne will, th will through Elliott, try to get the ball up toward the centre of the ground. He hooks it around Hardeman, who's in there. Can he take the mark? No, he went for the spoil. Put the ball to turf. Set and put it down. And Melbourne now will come forward. It's the Zantuck's long hand pass up to Byrne. Byrne backing himself here. Got a bit of pace. He's running away from Saru. Look at these two big fellas go. And Byrne, 35 metres out from goal. He's hooked it a little bit too much. Couldn't quite get a score. Cotogio tried to get it around and only one behind. Good run there by big Mike Byrne. Got a bit of pace, Bobby, for a big fellow. And that he has, Jack. Jeff Saru, unfortunately, uh, having the problem of chasing him, but now we find St Kilda going forward again. It's a long kick, came out towards Jeff Dunn. He's now on centre wing, had time to have the bounce, and then put the kick to, over this half-forward position. At the back is Brown, punches it away from Hardeman. Meehan couldn't gather the ball in, but he's still going after it like the true terrier he is. He's a tackle by Elshaw, but he got the ball away. Eventually, it comes out, and we find St Kilda going forward by, from the kick by Nettlefold. But he's offline, and yet another point goes on the board to the Saints as they go to six goals, 17. 53 points with Melbourne, 4-10-34.
Six goals, 17. Well, Melbourne in their first, uh, St Kilda in their first three matches kicked uh, a total of 56 63, so they've got a bad record this year as far as goal kicking is concerned. Herbert once again allows Elliott to be on his own and uh, accept that kick off from Stephen Smith. But now Elliott has time to go in towards centre half back, drive the ball into the centre, and Seddon punches the ball away. Moyer comes in, it's kicked off the ground though by Cunningham, and now the loose ball favours Jeff Dunn, who's played a fine game for St Kilda. Dunn gives a hand pass over the top, a bad one though, missed his teammate in Elphinstone. Snapped up by Seddon, a lovely pass from Seddon, finds Croswell, he puts it out wide to Andrew Moyer. Moyer's kick over the centre half forward position, Kellett in the front position, a juggling mark, a good one in defence by Kellett. Kellett bringing the ball away from the full back position now, going in toward the centre of the ground, a chance for Zantuck up in there was Milton Hall, couldn't take it, picked up by Saru, gave it on very quickly to Roberts, not a very good hand pass, but Roberts is, has enough time and ability to pick it up and drive in toward the half-forward zone. Going to bounce badly for Elliott. A good tackle against Herbert. The ball comes to Turf. There's a chance now for the shot at goal. It's being kicked by Brown, and it's only one behind. So St Kilda still off target at the seven-minute mark of the third quarter. Six goals, 18, to four goals, 10. Ten more shots uh, than Melbourne, and a lead of 20 points. Another short pass coming out. This time we find the recipient of the pass being Michael Young. Paletic a bit far down the track is over the uh, mark and a 15 metre penalty will be applied against Paletic. There might be another 15, that will happen. Uh, he's trying to hold play up. Young breaks away now and he's been told to play on by the umpire. Going in towards centre half forward. A long kick in the front position was Thomas but uh, eventually brought to ground by Croswell. Snapped up by Cotoggio. He lost the ball, gives a hand pass across now to Healy. The chance of the score coming up as Healy goes. Colwood and makes no mistake with that one. So Melbourne with Healy kicking his first goal go to five goals, 10, 40 points. St Kilda, 6, 18, 54. Then to bounce. Saru and Byrne. Byrne got the backhanded punch. Healy once again puts the ball forward for Melbourne. Thomas in position to mark and does exactly that. Under a little bit, bit of pressure from Croswell, but he gets a hand pass across to Barker, onto Callot. Callot up over the top where the Nettlefold, Nettle Mildenhall, I should say. I keep calling him Nettlefold, but we eventually find the ball taken away as there were four St Kilda players and Croswell and Meehan puts the ball up. Hardiman takes it, his tackle too high, gets the short kick in and it's accepted by Cotoggio from the point of the centre square on the back line. Cotoggio in towards the centre, goes across the ground, looking why. for Moyer. Elphinstone was there, taps the ball forward, but a bad bounce for Elphinstone. He eventually forces the ball forward again and Cunningham snaps it up. A bad handball from Cunningham though, is intercepted by Elshaw. His kick up towards the half-back line. A great effort to mark oh, by Fiddler. And called, <laughs> being called play on by the umpire. Well, the mark for mine. Well, the backhand had given out there too, and the Melbourne player went down under the uh, force of it. Is that Zantac down there, Elshaw? Elshaw, Elshaw, Elshaw it is, yes, who uh, laying on his back. But the ruck deal continues here, brought to turf. And St Kilda seem to take it away easily through Meehan. Down towards the half-forward zone. Not the chance for Melbourne's defence to take it away. And Giles in a little bit of trouble. Goes straight up the centre of the ground. Nobody home for Melbourne, though, as Trevor Barker takes an easy mark. Gives the hand pass across to Cunningham. St Gilda going forward as Cunningham comes with a long kick towards the goal square. It could even make... No, it's just touched by Robert Elliott. So yet another point goes on the board to the Saints. And they go to 6-19, as we see Tony Elshaw. That's not Elshaw, it's Kelly O'Donnell. We saw the three when he went down in the first place, Jack. <laughs> and uh, it's Kelly O'Donnell in the hands of the trainers as Stephen Smith goes for the short pass. It goes over the head of the players. Michael Roberts swoops on the ball, slips on the cricket area, uh, the practice wickets, that is, as Satori pops one in the back, and he will take the free kick. Satori a long way out from goal. Well, if you know the MCG, there is a uh, Kelly O'Donnell in the hands of the trainers. Looks like he copped one right across the nose. Satori's kick been put into a good position for a score but well punched away the Melbourne defence standing up a bit better in this quarter Bob very much so Jack as Elshaw the, the rover swings the ball out wide to the wing finds Zantuck Zantuck looking for the handball then decides to put the left foot kick down towards the set over the centre wing Barker leads in the race for the ball gives it across now to Cox Cox coming down the ground a hand Oops. poor hand pass but we, we find it well taken by Nettlefold Nettlefold there, there. well I'm laughing because of the way Giles made that tackle. Smith couldn't quite make the ball. Robert Roberts swoops on it. It's a handball across. Missed by Jezalinko. He kept the push in the back as well. But uh, fortunately for Melbourne, no free kick paid. And it was forced through for one point. 
So St Kilda to 6.20 as we see Dean Herbert come off on the interchange. He'll be placed by Barry Breen and it's 6.20, 56 St Kilda, Melbourne 5, 10, 40. And a chance to take the ball away from the half-back line. Elliot being held but breaking away from the tackle of Satori. But Melbourne going wide, very wide to the outer wing. I can't see any sense in this. Cunningham backs himself now against Healy and did it well. From the half-forward zone, he shoots in a hand pass and Kilda coming back into it through Meehan. Meehan shot a goal going very close, but it, no, they're off target again. Seven consecutive points. Uh, Jack, seven, is it? Seven consecutive behinds for this third quarter. They've gone from, uh, yeah, 6.14 to 6.21. That's not the best way to win a football match, Bob, but they still seem to have enough up their sleeve. 17 points, but Melbourne only have to get a couple of quick goals and they're right back in business. Short pass again. Nettlefold uh, should have gone for the punch because Green was down in the front position. Giles gets the short kick towards centre wing. Young is the player who's looking for. Young falls in front of the Barker. Barker coming over the top. And eventually we'll find that the umpire Peter Howell comes in to indicate that he'll bounce the ball on centre wing directly in front of our broadcasting position. And 12 minutes have gone in the third quarter as Barker got up high. Comes down towards Cotogio and the free kick has been given to Barker. He sees that and he was grabbed too high. He was up above everybody. Barker sees political on his own on the half forward flank. That player accepts it. Plays on straight away. Goes down looking for Jezelenko. Punched away by Stephen Smith. It goes over the boundary line and the throw in will take place about 10 metres around from the behind post in the forward pocket for St Kilda. Bobby, it seems a shame that such a talented player like Smith has to be virtually wasted to try and com combat Jezelenko. That's how it seems to me. He's, such, he's more creative than that. Well, Stephen Smith uh, in the last couple of years, Jack, hasn't really produced a football that uh, we know he should. So uh, maybe Barassi feels that that is his job in defence. As Nettlefold now puts the ball down towards the forward pocket in position to mark his green. And he does not let Nettlefold down. So Barry Breen with the opportunity of kicking his first goal from about 25 metres out. You see the boundary line in the back line. He's in the, in the background. He's about 10 metres in from the boundary line. So Barry Breen, who's kicked many goals in his numerous games with St Kilda, goes goalward. One point again. So eight consecutive points in this quarter as St Kilda go to six goals, 22, 58, three goals the margin over Melbourne, 5, 10, 40. And a short pass from the full back position finding uh, Healy. Healy Borks, Borks again, eventually got a short kick in toward the centre of the ground and through Young, Melbourne have a chance to come forward from the centre of the MCG. After about four possessions, they look for Cotogio on the half forward flank. They are only using the short game. I can't quite work this out. And uh, they should know the MCG better than anybody else. Cotogio's kick up towards Jackson in the front. Can't hold. Oh, nearly did. Does he play it or not? Yes, he has. That was a good mark, Bobby. And it was, Jack. He Jackson. uses his body well, doesn't he? When he does get in position. But, yes. Uh, a little slow to get in position on some occasions. I think the ball has to be kicked straight at him. I don't think he can lead to it. He certainly does not lack courage as he tries now to kick his second goal. Well, Melbourne need this. They can creep right up to 46 points, only 12 points in it if he kicks it. And as Jackson goes goalward, a nice kick, a nice goal, so Melbourne within 12 points. And that goal by Jackson, it's 46 to 58, 6.10 to 6.22, as Alex Jezelenko comes off to be replaced by Gary Locks. There's a link on the uh, interchange bench. Lops on for St Kilda and uh, the scores tightening up. Uh, well, mainly through St Kilda's bad kicking for goal. 6.22 and of that, they have kicked eight straight behinds in this quarter. Their last goal, Jack, for St Kilda's was kicked at the 13-minute mark of the second term. So they have been uh, over a quarter now without kicking a goal. Well, Dunn tried to get the ball out. Couldn't do so. Taken out here by Cunningham. His hand pass comes out to Nettlefold. Gave it on to Roberts. It was a bit quick for him. And uh, from the centre half forward, Roberts could have a shot at goal here. He puts it on its way, he may have got one. Yes, Roberts kicks his third goal. And it took St Kilda 15 minutes into this quarter, Bobby, to bring that goal up. And a good piece of work too it was with the St Kilda players. Yes, Jack, Cunningham was brilliant to get the ball out in the first place. And uh, then Nettlefold, a fine uh, piece of handball to give it to Michael Roberts. And uh, he had, well, he was able to go from almost the centre of the ground about uh, 30 or 40 metres before he had to kick the ball. That means that they weren't tackled. 
at the centre bounce. We find Saru getting the ball down to Nettlefold. It's back with Saru again. He gives a long hand pass where we find Mildred Hall accepting that handball. Up towards Green in the forward pocket. He gathers the ball in well. On to the left, then to the right, and then screws it down towards the forward pocket. It goes right across the face of Golo. Bounces just before the boundary line. Stephen Smith unable to get there for that mark. So a throw-in will take place. St Kilda 7, 22, 64, Melbourne 6, 10, 46. Boundary throw-in in St Kilda's forward pocket, only 20 metres out from goal, and Saru will do battle with Byrne, but over the top is a good opportunity to score. As Brown, his hand passed straight up in the air, when actually went away from goal. Lowy Fowler trying to come away, but he's still over the top of the ball, trying to get it clear, eventually taps it out to Seddon. Seddon tackled, but had no chance of getting rid of the ball, so umpire John Sutcliffe indicates there that he will bounce. John Sutcliffe umpiring his 200th game today. Saru gets the one down towards Nettlefold. Nettlefold tackled just as he was about to give the handball. And then he eventually comes back with it again. Tackled high, but uh, well, not well after. He had ample opportunity of getting rid of the ball. And so the free kick will go the way of Melbourne's Peter Giles. Giles will come up with a 15-metre penalty up to the centre-half back position. Melbourne breaking down at centre-half forward. There have been a few 15-metre penalties paid today, Jack. It's been a lot, yes, Bobby. Barker tapped it out well. With a chance for Thomas to put the ball long and deep. Tried hard, but his kicks a little bit offline, and a good mark has been paid to foul. Laurie Fowler putting it in toward the members' wing position. Baker taking the mark for Melbourne. Hasn't got the chance to play on because he's still on the turf, as you see. Going past now is Young for the hand pass, but he's just going to get one. Another 15 metre penalty. It appears that Baker might be limping a bit there, Bob, too. Baker's kick off the side of the boot in towards centre-half forward and Croswell coming through takes a nice mark. Handball's on straight away to Young. Young gives it out to Healy, a chance of a score if Healy can kick long. He gets around uh, Cunningham and then runs into a bit of trouble and is forced to kick left foot, but it's into the arms of Capoggio. So Melbourne with the opportunity of coming six points closer. It's 46 to 64 at the moment, so can Capoggio bring Melbourne within 12 points yet again? Well, they got there a moment ago. Cotoggio going for his first goal. He hasn't had the best of days. Let's see if he can get a goal for his effort here. Puts it on its way, and the umpire said he's all clear. So Melbourne kicking goals, and Cotoggio's first goal. Goal to move their score, 7-10 to 7-22. 12 points the difference. Michael Roberts high over the top of Baker. Got the tap, but it's intercepted by Healy. A quick hand pass towards oh. Elshaw. Elshaw, well... Again, far too casual, then gets a long hand pass, looking for and finding Hardiman, but he missed an easy one. And now we find Poletic going goalward as he puts the long kick down there. At the back, we find the big fellow in green, and he gave away a free kick getting into the back of Elliott, so the free kick will be taken right on the goal line by Robert Elliott. Green being brought back to five metres into the goal square, and so Robert Elliott now from the full-back position. Well, Melbourne making a lot of mistakes on the field and St Kilda making mistakes in shooting for goal. The ball over the back of the pack, taken here by Brown. The hand pass comes out to Roberts, who's kicked three goals. This could be goal number four. I think it is. Yes, Michael Roberts kicks his fourth goal. Well, a great effort from young Roberts, Bobby. He started off well, had a very ordinary second quarter, though he did some good things, but now he's brought up four goals. Yes, Jack, I'm sure that Alex Jezelenka would be happy with the performance of Roberts, but I'm sure also that Ron Barassi would not be happy with the lack of pressure that's being applied by the Melbourne Rovers against young Roberts. Umpire Sutcliffe will put it down. Barassi won't be happy with the sloppy hand passing that's going on out there either. Baker up high, got the tap down, comes to Roberts again, the left foot kick just getting to the centre-half forward position where Brown threw high against his teammate, been picked up by Nettlefold, the kick down could bounce badly for all concerned, or Green should let it go, oh! If he threw, it's a goal! Kicked by Barry Green, I thought he would have let it go, but I don't think he realised he was so close to the goal line. In fact, the player that put the ball down there for Barry Breen is certainly a very much improved player, and that is uh, Michael Nettlefold. Yes, he's much improved, Bobby. Playing very well. Unusual, too. One of the few players to be wearing long sleeves. Dunn always wears long sleeves for St Kilda, but there's on the coach, Jezelenko, and uh, Jack Clark. Jezelenko shouting instructions or pointing in that direction. At the bounce, Saru coming in from the side, Baker from directly on. Saru get, gets over the top of Baker, full play on as Poletic tried to get the ball clear. He dropped the ball at the vital moment, but he's well supported by Saru. And the left foot kick out towards the half-forward line. Giles got into the back of uh, Nettlefold, but got away with it on that occasion. 
and date to find Mutt. Seven's going to lead out wide for the kick. He may not quite get to it. Cross was the elect, and he takes the mark. The umpire has paid that mark on the half forward flank. <laughs> Cross <Crossville> like, <laughs> like a raging bull. He's on the half forward flank out of side. He certainly gets the crowd in. The drop punt from Croswell. Right up. Punched away by Elphinstone. Tapped on by Byrne. Beautiful oh. football, but a bad bounce for, 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 for Toggio. It's back now with Moyer. Moyer gets the hand pass out. Barker tackled just as he was about to kick the ball, and eventually Callet's kick comes up, and it's in a half back. Balletic takes the diving mark. He should be able to put the ball in long into the middle, but there's no one to kick to. It's a rather wild kick. Zantuck can get there first. He's going to allow Hardiman to do the uh, work here. Hardiman picking up, going back to the half forward line where Young can take the mark. I thought Toledic may have come in a bit harder than that, but Young has taken the mark for Melbourne on the half forward flank. The short passes toward Cotoggio. He can play on if he wishes, but I think he may hand pass over the top. No, he's not. I, he's I, would, an opportunity I was with you, Jack. I yeah. thought he would too. Give it to Seddon because Seddon was uh, clear with nobody near him. But Vin Cotoggio, who is a nice kick, and he's obviously completely confident of kicking this goal and making it number two for the quarter. A lovely kick from Cotoggio, shepherded through, and so he brings up his second goal as Melbourne go to eight goals, 10, 58 points, St Kilda, 9-12, 76. Still Saru and Baker. No clear knockout from either player, and eventually Elshaw got it, got tackled too high, and he'll take the free kick. Gives a hand pass out to Cameron Clayton. Clayton's short kick accepted by Healy. Healy wanting to draw the play up and give a hand pass on to Moyer. Moyer from centre half forward. A wobbly looking kick in towards the square. Byrne was up, it was punched away though by Cox. Croswell's there showing good strength. He's tackled. The ball is underneath Croswell. I thought it should have been Croswell's free kick, really. Uh, isn't he going crook about it? He's having his few words to say. Uh, Jackson trying to calm, calm him down. And uh, I think he thought Jackson was an opposition player there. He might have had one on him. The bounce taking place about 30 metres out from goal. Byrne got a good tap. Can the Rovers take advantage of it? Could have been a free kick there to Cox. It's been called play on. And strong football. Comes back with Croswell. Croswell tackled too high. Of old, I would not be the least bit surprised, Jack, if this goes right through the centre. He's having a go at Saru now, and uh, Saru coming down, being spoken to by umpire John Sutcliffe. A lot of pressure. He certainly adds colour to a game of football, doesn't he, Brent Croswell? He's going to have a 15 metre penalty, Jack, against Saru. Oh, well, there you are. This brings Croswell within 20, or oh, even from where he'll kick, he'll be 20 metres out, dead in front of goal. It couldn't be any straighter in front of you if you wanted a shot. Boswell practicing the follow through. Don't leave it short. He's going to put the boot right behind it if I'm any judge. There it goes through the center of the goals. Oh, did he miss? He's missed it. Well, what do you think of all that? Well, I think the 15 meter penalty and everything else and the time that Boswell took led to the fact that he just casually approached that kick and just at a time when Melbourne desperately needed a goal, it's one point. So it's Melbourne 8 11 59. St Kilda 9-22-76. Well, as I say, he had some colour. There's the kick from Cox to the outer side. Seddon's there, but Barker's there also for St Kilda. He takes a good mark over Seddon. Playing on quickly from the half-back line. He transfers play into all the half-forward zone, where Satori will fly. Can't take the mo. Oh, yes, did he get played over Cameron Clayton? Young by call play on a good decision. We find swooping on the ball down there from Melbourne, Hardiman, but he couldn't win possession of the ball. Elshaw was grabbed when not didn't have the ball. And so he'll take the free kick. Plays on straight away. Comes in across towards centre half back. Goes across the ground looking for Zantuck. And he takes the mark. Plays on again. Zantuck puts the long left foot kick down looking for Jackson. At the back, Cox brought the ball down but couldn't take possession. Puts it out wide. Croswell takes it. Gives it to O'Donnell. O'Donnell snaps. It's going towards the goal but not quite straight enough. And one more point to Melbourne this time as O'Donnell hobbles away. And his point takes Melbourne to 8-12. 60, 16 points. The deficit facing Melbourne uh, with St Kilda on 9-22-76. Out of side, half forward flank position, but it's uh, now Moyer of Melbourne. Long hand pass into the flank again or into the pocket to Kennard. Couldn't get him. Healy. And now we find Tom, oh. Thomas being tackled too high. Thomas drapes through the tackle, goes on from the centre of the ground. A long kick towards half forward and Peter Brown waiting at the back. 
Fakes an easy chest mark, and he'll have the chance of bringing up his second goal if he can kick truly. He's only 40 metres out, 45 possibly, from where he'll kick. Every chance of a score. Kick some goals for Carlson when he was playing with that club. Going for his second goal now. It's a good-looking kick. Will it carry? No, it doesn't quite carry. The mark will be paid to Smith. Right on the goal line. Smith being opposed to Gary Lofts. Gives a hand pass across now to Young. Oh, and Young oh. runs straight into trouble. Foolish play by the Melbourne defenders. Lofts was there. Smith recovering again. This time gets a hand pass to Young once more. And again he gets tackled, but he gets a quick hand pass to Giles. This time he doesn't muck around. Or it's touched and called play on. And we find that Moyer was there. Moyer and Seddon competed for the ball. Moyer was able to recover. The hand pass out to Healy. Healy tackled just as he got boot to ball and a long kick into the square. Up high is Burn! was just through for a point though as Byrne tried to bring it back and so one point goes on the board to Melbourne and the scoreboard now reads Melbourne 8-13, 61, 9-22, 76 and Kilda. Short pass from the full back position is all right. Meehan. Hand pass over the top to move the ball quickly is Fiddler. Fiddler going through the half back line looking for the short pass again was looking for Cunningham but it bounced badly for him. Still in play though. I thought it may have gone out. Another hand pass comes up. Elphinstone puts the ball down to the half-forward zone where Brown is there. Poletic at the back of the pack picking up the left foot shot at goal by Poletic and he's missed. Must be a lack of talk down there, Jack, because... Uh, he had all day to come back, didn't he, under right. his kicking foot. So it will be Stephen Smith. There's the board, 77 to 61. One goal, eight. Or one goal, ten, is it, Jack? The margin? Well, so a, lot, a lot of points, I know that. 16 points between the sides as Fowler gets a push in the back and he'll take the free kick. Laurie Fowler, back pocket player, now on the half-back line. Drives it towards centre wing. Brown in the front position. Called play on as Nettlefold got the hand pass up towards Thomas. Thomas well tackled, but he breaks past the tackle, showing a tremendous amount of strength. He's running into trouble. The hand pass over the top to Saru. No pressure at all on Saru. And his kick over the half-forward line. The defence of Stephen Smith taps it down. It's taken by Meehan. Meehan straightens up the handball over the top to Philetic. A chance of a goal coming up here as Philetic puts the ball forward. And full points this time. Good football by Simon Meehan to allow Milan Philetic to take St Kilda to 10-23. 83 points. Melbourne 8-13-61. May have been a goal but didn't get in by much, Bob. No, it wasn't a good <laughs> kick, really. <laughs> it wasn't a good kick, but it brought up the... Uh, the uh, six points. But having already kicked four behinds, I'm sure that Philetic would be pleased to have a full, uh, full pointer on the ball. Well, Barry uh, Breen congratulated him straight away. Hardiman and Philetic. Now it's centre bounce. Baker. Oh, Saru got there. It was a bad bounce for Baker. Saru getting the boot to it, but not a good kick. Comes down toward the half-forward zone. Tapped down toward Nettafold now. Now he couldn't accept it, though. And it looks like Cameron Clayton will take the ball away. But, oh, Melbourne's hand passing is absolutely atrocious. Eventually, Hardiman gets it out to Clayton. The kick from Clayton towards half-forward. Punched away by Healy. Accepted there by Alfinston, but he lost possession of the ball. And Katoggio couldn't win possession. And then Moyer comes away. Moyer tackles. Gets a wild hand pass in. Dunn couldn't quite win possession of the ball. And he pushes Katoggio in the back, but it's called play on. The hand pass comes out towards Fiddler. And Fiddler has all the time in the world to casually go in towards the centre, not casual in his approach. The kick, the mark, missed by Giles. A good tackle from Giles. That's where the loose ball come the way of Baker. A, a hand, long hand pass from Baker doesn't quite get to Zantuck, but the siren goes, saving Zantuck. Any worries at three-quarter time, we see Melbourne eight goals.